that was relatively simple. So what I came up with with this in mind was was a risk tolerance test. Basically, it was one question, one single question that would allow me to kind of, if I if I truly self reflected and answered it, you know, if I answered it honestly, then I would be able to to move forward with this. It's no secret that real estate is one of the best investment vehicles out there, but how can we determine which strategies will best align with our financial ambitions? Well, you've come to the right spot. Whether you're an active real estate entrepreneur, a passive investor, or looking to get into real estate investing, our goal is to provide investors with the insights and strategies for building our portfolios all while protecting our capital. I'm Daniel Nichols, and this is the Two Smart Assets Real Estate Investing Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you something that I've used um, over the years that has helped me immensely in my uh, investing journey uh, that I hope you'll be able to get some value from. So let's just dive into it. So today, we're going to be talking about my personal ultimate risk tolerance test that basically I've used since since I started investing, right? And it's kind of um, moved from being something that I really, really depended on to something that I kind of just use when I need it to, right? Um, and so let's just rewind a little bit. So when I first started with investing, I I knew that I needed to learn as much as possible, right? This is, I think everybody starts out in this position. It's just, you know, you want to be educated. You want to learn as much as possible. Uh, so you don't, so you can try to avoid as many mistakes as possible. So I was heavy in education mode, you know, consuming all of the books that I could get my hands on, listening to every podcast that I could, downloading every free spreadsheet template for deal analysis that I could get my hands on. And so I was diving into all of this, like most of us do. And um, I was really gaining some confidence as myself as an investor. But as we all know, you're not really an investor until you actually get in the game. And so, you know, as I was moving forward and I began looking at deals and it would come time to make an offer or just move forward on something uh, that would actually, you know, kind of solidify myself as an investor, I was starting to feel a lot of resistance, like a lot of resistance to where I wasn't able to move forward anymore. And so call it analysis paralysis, call it whatever you want. Um, at the time, I was just, it was just the lack of action was keeping me from actually getting started. And so despite my thoughts of being an investor, I really wasn't at the time. So after some self-reflection, I knew that I needed to make a change and I needed to figure out what was really holding me back from being able to move forward, to be able to make those offers, be able to take down deals, stuff like that. And so after doing some self-reflection and um, kind of some trial and error, some smaller investments, I found out that the thing that was holding me back was uh, it was fear of the unknown, right? You know, I was basically trying to do the impossible and account for all of the unknowns. And you can't do that, right? And so what it boiled down to was risk, uh, at least for me. And so it was, I was afraid of taking this risk. I was afraid of what could happen because I didn't know, I didn't know what could happen. I didn't know all of the outcomes. And so this risk thing was really weighing heavy on me. And so, you know, as I'm going through this and I've identified kind of the, the hurdle that I needed to get over, um, I realized that this was just another thing that I had to add to the long list of other items that I was going through when when taking down deals or trying to take down a deal, right? Like I didn't need another checklist. I didn't need another spreadsheet. I had plenty of those to do already. You know, so what I did was I needed something that was relatively simple. So what I came up with with this in mind was was a risk tolerance test. Basically, it was one question, one single question that would allow me to kind of if I if I truly self-reflected and answered it, you know, if I answered it honestly, then I would be able to to move forward with this. And so, you know, why was it just one question? Again, because it cried it quickly provided clarity. And that's exactly what I needed. I was already very uncertain and somewhat confused about how to move forward at this point. Right. So and in my and throughout that experience, what I found was was that uncertainty and confusion can really only cause two responses, right? And so the first response typically for me was no. And so what I found throughout throughout this process is that actually that first response, if it is no, is that it, it actually can be, be very valuable uh, because it immediately alleviates some pressure. Um, it takes it off the table. I don't understand this. I don't understand what's going on. It's not for me, right? I can't I can't move forward in this because I don't understand it, which is something that I fundamentally um, believe in when investing. Only invest in things that you understand, unless you're speculating, and that's a whole different topic that we get into later um, or on another episode. But 
So you take this idea of uncertainty or confusion, but then you start to mix it with maybe like scarcity or uh, a deadline that's involved, right? And now you're adding more and more pressure. So if you're already confused and then now you have a deadline to hit, um, some serious mistakes can happen. I think, and actually there's a, there's a quote out there. It's a mistakes, love a rush decision. And so that was me at the time, right? Uh, that's the last thing I wanted to happen. I wanted to avoid that as much as possible, but I also wanted to move forward as much as I could. I wanted to be an investor. Right. And so I think, uh, for me at the time, you know, recognizing that, um, there was uncertainty, there wasn't confusion. And, you know, if I had to, you know, submit a debt, uh, submit an offer by a certain deadline, or maybe this, this passive investment, you know, was only open until, you know, an, another two weeks or whatever. Right. Um, knowing that I didn't understand the deal or something about it, or there was uncertainty or confusion on any part of mine. And I had exhausted all the questions that I could come up with um, saying that no still allows me to move forward. So that can either look like either just dismissing the opportunity completely, or it can be, diving deeper to get a better understanding for when the next opportunity comes along. And, and with that being said, you got to keep in mind, right? I know this happens. This happened to me. Uh, in fact, sometimes it still happens to me, but it happens to all the investors. You get this fear of missing out thing coming, coming over you. Right. And so, but I got to tell you, despite, you know, any initial fears of missing out, there will always be more great opportunities down the road. So, you know, with the confusion, with, with, with the deadline, with the scarcity, all of that stuff mixed together, don't worry about missing out on a deal. Um, because there will always be better deals. And this is something I had to learn um, the hard way. So again, first response is usually to say no when you have uncertainty or confusion. The second response to those things, uncertainty confusion, is where is the issue is where I've encountered the most issues, really, uh, especially in my investing career. And and that response is to just do nothing. Basically just sit on the sidelines. So and at first glance, this may not seem like a big deal, but here's why it is. So first thing is you don't learn anything. You're just going to be sitting on the sideline. You, 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 you decide to not decide, right? And so you don't learn anything from the experience. You just kind of move on to something else. And so it makes it that much easier just to kind of forget about. So you don't learn anything from that experience. You just move on to the next thing. It might be something completely different, right? And so it's one of those things that, you know, you learn from wins, you learn from losses, but at this point you haven't had either. You haven't had a win or a loss. And so you're not learning anything in the process. So first thing is you're not learning anything. Second thing is, you know, when you encounter uncertainty or, or confusion or any form of resistance, and then you choose to do nothing um, and move on to something else, whether consciously or subconsciously, this type of behavior can become habitual and actually permeate to other areas of your life, right? And so um, I have found this out personally. It wasn't just with investing. And I think I probably found this out before investing. Um, but, you know, you start to you start to feel a little bit of resistance in one area of something. And you're like, hey, listen, I, maybe I don't want to go through this. Or maybe, again, maybe you don't even think about this. Maybe you just subconsciously move on to your, to your phone and go play on social media, right? And decide that, you know, I'm not going to give this one thing my attention anymore because a little bit of resistance came up. And so- what can happen is, is if you start doing this in one area of your life, it can happen in other areas as well. And it's something you really need to be careful of because I've seen it happen to myself. I've seen it happen to other people and it can, it can be debilitating, right? And this is not the habits. This is not the ha kind of habit you want to be building. And so keep that in mind. So the next thing I would say is this paralysis or the state of doing nothing when you choose to do nothing this can last far longer than initially anticipated. And what do I what do I mean by that? So instead of saying like, hey, you know, this I'm just gonna, you know, let this sit by itself for a day or two or a week. Well, what can happen is is that if you're not conscious about these decisions you're making and basically not doing anything about these things, you can actually push this out for months years. I've had this happen to myself where it's like, where you look back and you reflect like three years later, I'm still dealing with the same thing, the making the same decision, pushing forward or not pushing forward. And whether you know it or not, it's, it's, 
it's weighing on you. It's it's weighed on me for years. You know, there's things that I've been dealing with in my life where it comes to investing or growing a business or health or building relationships. You know, it's I haven't made a commitment or uncommitted from it. I just let it kind of just rest and just kind of just hang out there in my brain. And that is exactly what you don't want to do. So these are the couple of reasons why I think that this is a big deal that not doing any, not taking any action or not deciding whether you're going to do something or not do something can be detrimental to moving forward. So taking all that in, into, into, um, into account, uh, let's go, we're going back to the risk tolerance test. So, you know, I told you at the very beginning that this is basically a one question assessment, right? And so before you can actually look into this question, uh, and actually ask yourself this question and be able to answer it, um, we need to get clarity on the risks that are involved with whatever project that we're doing. And so when I say risks, and I'm not, I don't mean by all of the risks, I mean the biggest risks. And typically it's best to find just the biggest risk, one risk, if you can find this, just the, the biggest thing for you. And this can vary depending on your circumstance, right? So for instance, um, short, we don't, I know we don't talk a lot of stock, a lot about stocks on the show, but uh, for instance, shorting stocks can lead to, you know, losses that far exceed your initial investment, right? And, uh, or maybe a, a decision that you make leads to something that will tarnish, tarnish your reputation, or maybe, you know, you make a decision that kind that to put, um, an important relationship in jeopardy. And so I think, you know, these risks that you identify can be a number of different things, right? And so you definitely want to make sure that um, when you're when you're looking at this, that you realize that there's a long list of major risks can be involved in whatever decisions need to be made. But for the context of what we're talking about today, we need to focus on just the biggest risk, the one risk, right? And so that being said, um, you want to be able to narrow that down in your mind and then and then move forward to the next step. So, you know, as as the show for a long time, listeners, uh, you know, we talk about real estate investing. And if you're new here, um, you know, thank you for tuning in. But uh, yeah, so we typically talk about uh, real estate investing. So with this in mind, for us, the biggest risk is typically losing our initial investment, right? So we're not shorting stocks. We're not doing any of that stuff. It's usually, you know, the biggest risk you have, uh, the biggest thing you have losing is losing whatever money you put into a deal. And so, so you've got this in mind now. So you've got this, this process, you've got this part of the process down, you've established whatever risk it is for this uh, example, we're going to say it's, it's losing our initial investment. So whether it be $50,000, $20,000, $100,000, $200,000, dollars whatever it may be, um, we're just going to say that's that's what the biggest risk is for this example. So now that we've identified it, it's time to ask the ultimate risk assessment question. And something that I, you know, I want to make I want to make this clear is this is a very simple question. It's a very short question, but it's been super powerful for me uh, over the years. And um, I really hope it like puts things in perspective that if you can answer this question, um, you might be able to get over a lot of hurdles when it comes to not just investing, but some other decisions you need to make in your life. And so the one question that I've always used to kind of assess my risk and, and whether to decide I need, need to move forward or not move forward on something is, can I stomach the downside? Am I going to be able to sleep at night if the worst happens? Will I be able to continue on not only surviving, but thriving like I was before if I make this decision and everything goes sideways. So this is the main question. Will you be able to stomach the downside, the worst of the worst, if it were to happen? So in this case, uh, the biggest risk is, like I said, losing our initial investment. So whether it be $50,000, $100,000, $200,000, uh, will you be able to stomach the downside if all of that went away? And that's the answer. That's the question that you have to answer. So now... Before we move on, one thing to keep in mind when asking this question is, is that you need to be brutally honest with yourself about the response. This is not the time to be wishy-washy on maybe a yes or maybe a no. There is only two possible answers to this question. It's either yes or no. There's no maybe. And so you have to be able to be very, very honest with yourself and clear whether or not if you lose 
if this biggest risk happens, if you if it goes completely sideways and you experience the worst of the worst with this investment, will you be able to stomach that downside? And you have to be brutally honest with yourself. But the reason why, and you know, there's a lot of reasons why I like this this question. But the main one for me is is like I said, there can only be one answer. It's either yes or no. And either answer quickly provides clarity. And that's through this whole thing, as, as I described earlier, that's what I was looking for, being able to get clarity on moving forward on a deal or not. And so for me, it boiled down to risk. And if I can stomach the downside, the worst of the worst, the downside, the worst downside risk possible for this deal, if I can stomach that, if I can stomach losing all of my initial investment, then that clears me of the risk, the risk hurdle. I can move on. If I need to, I can move on to um I can move on to the next step in the process. So if I say yes, yes, I can stomach this downside, then I can move forward, take action with the next step, whether that be, you know, further due diligence or or just actually making the investment and just move forward and, you know, pull the trigger. Or if the answer is no, then for me, it's a cl- it's a clear sign that I'm just not I'm not ready to take that next step. You know, I need to I need to push that aside, um, just take it out of my brain. Not this one. Live to fight another day. And so, you know, when I when I look back when I first started when I first started investing, this was a very important question for me, right? Because it really alleviated some of the pressure uh, of of not knowing of what could potentially happen, right? Because I hadn't experienced anything yet. And so uh, I needed something to get me over that hurdle and a way to move forward and not get stuck perpetually waiting on, on the perfect time to invest or the perfect deal or whatever, right? And so I could ask my, I could look at a deal. I was confident in my ability to to analyze a deal at the time I was analyzing single family rentals. Um, so I was confident in my ability to analyze the deal, but then I could ask myself this one question and get me over that risk hurdle, which is exactly what I needed. So instead of always sitting on the sidelines, just stuck in education mode, I was now in the game, learning far more than any book or podcast would ever teach me. And so again, at the beginning, this question changed my investing career, whether it was any type of investing, right? Uh, It could be moving forward in a speculation. It could be stocks. it It could be real estate investing. It could be just a life decision. It could be anything, right? It just depends how you apply it and if you're actually honest with your answer. And so, you know, back when I first started, this was very helpful. But the truth is, is I still use this today in, in many ways. And it's it's been vital in answering a lot of questions for me and providing clarity whether I should move forward or not with with anything really. So, so if you're feeling stuck in, you know, the decision-making process, give it a shot, you know, evaluate the risk, Determine what the biggest risk it, risks are um, if you move forward and then ask yourself, can I stomach the downside? And that's really all it is to it. I mean, that'll get you over at least one hurdle. Um, I know there are many parts of moving forward with an investment, but uh, I know this this helped me uh, immensely. And so hopefully this quick ass- quick assessment can uh, help, help provide clarity and aid uh, you in the decision-making process as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's helpful. And yeah. Um, look forward to uh, talking to you guys in the next episode. Cheers. Hey, real quick before we get out of here, do me a huge favor and leave a rating and review for the podcast. We're always looking to bring you guys the best insights and strategies for building our real estate portfolios and your ratings and reviews really help with getting top guest speakers that are the best in the real estate investing business. I promise this will only take you a few seconds and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for being awesome, guys. Cheers.